Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 18th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be adding in the monster behind the door, looking at animations for it and also importing our weapon. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you could help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So up to now we have our door slamming open, but nothing really slams it open. So what we're going to do is we're going to import two things before we go any further. We're going to import our monster behind the door, and we're also going to import our weapon for a little later on in this video. So let's go down here to our object assets, and we need to import into here um, two folders, which is going to be this demon alien, and this handgun and as always go to the pinned comment or link in description you can download them absolutely free uh, you may get an error saying modo could not be launched all you need to do go to console click clear all that really means is that it's to do with how the model is made it's looking for some extra assets that don't exist but we don't actually need them assets for all this to work so how do we get this working in place well what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this for uh, floor here duplicate it and move it to the other side of this door. And essentially what we're going to do is put our monster here with some animations on him. And what we'll do is we will just go to that other side of the door and go to the demon alien folder, go to prefab and drag and drop onto there. And you can see he is quite small, so we just need to increase his size, three by three by three. And that probably looks about right. That should do the trick. Uh, next thing we need to do is start looking at the animations and he has several animations that come with him uh, So if we go to the animation folder there, you can see all these animations Now it's up to you whether you want him to just be idle um, For now, I'm going to put the idle animation on him But I'm also going to put the attack animation on him as well and we can see just how this is going to work So if you go to the idle animation click the little button next to it You'll be able to see this little icon here, which you may recognize previously from animations so if we click that, hold control, press D, what it will do is it will create a duplicate of that animation and extract it out of the file to make it its own actual animation. Now what we need to do is click on loop time up here and then on our monster alien here, drag and drop onto there. And what that will do is when we click him, you'll see we've now got the animator component, which means if we click animator up here, we can see that, well, already he's got all of these, uh, but we need to modify this a little bit more. So, for example, if we press play now and head back to our scene view, we'll see what happens with this particular monster. So you can see it's got this idle animation, which is exactly what we want, but in case it decides to play any more animations, we need to essentially clear all of these other animations because we, we don't essentially need them. You can see the idle one that we've actually imported there. So what we'll do is press delete on it, click all of these others and delete them one by one. So all we're left with is just an idle animation. And theoretically you could delete that idle animation as well if, if you actually ended up doing that and just drag and drop the idle animation that we created and you'd end up with the same effect. Now, all of these animations can be used in different ways. So there's our idle animation. We could also slow it down if we wanted to. So we could slow it by going to animator, clicking on idle, and this speed here, let's change that to 0.5. Press play once again, and that will slow down his actual idle animation. So now it looks a little bit more natural. And it's up to you whichever animation you want to use for idle, whether you want to slow it down or whether you want to have it uh, normal speed. Uh, next, let's have a look at some of these attack animations. And we can see we've got this one here. And let's go to this very first one. And we'll do the exact same thing. So let's hold control, press D. And that will extract it out. And I'm going to rename this actually to just attack. And then I'm going to drag and drop onto our alien. And what that will do is if we go to animator, you can see it is now its own new animation. 
So if we right click and click on set as default state, let's go to uh, press play and then let's go to scene view. I don't think this will um, loop, but you can see there's his attack animation. So we've at least got these animations in place now and they can be helpful uh, a little later on down the line. So for now, let's click on idle, set as default state. And let's go back to our scene view and let's see how this looks when we approach the door. So the next thing to do is a bit of play testing. Let's go to our player capsule and let's move that a bit closer to the door. So we should move it to round about there. Let's press play and let's see how this looks. Obviously, if it doesn't look okay, you should absolutely take more time in your development. But there we go. There is our monster behind the door. Maybe we should make him a little bit bigger to make him a bit more fearing, a bit more scary. Let's have that as four by four by four. Let's see how that looks now. Hopefully it should look okay. And that's better. See, now he looks a little bit more scary looking, I guess. And what I want to do now is let's have a look at some of these other attack animations because we could use them quite usefully. So let's try this one here. So attack three, hold control, press D. And I will just drag and drop this onto Mr. Alien once again. Let's go to the animator and let's have a look how that is. So uh, set default state. Let's press play and see how it looks. Uh, do you know what we'll do? I think we'll actually select loop time so we can see it looping so we don't miss it. Let's have another quick look. Uh, because the, I guess the idea is you could have him attack and the door slams open. Maybe? I, I guess you could do that if you wanted to. Let's see how that looks if we walk up to him. Like that. Cool. I guess that makes sense. Uh, for now, though, I am just going to leave him as idle. Because the idea is I just want him to be there behind the door. And it's like, ooh, scary. Scary monster. Uh, so what we will do now is we've got him in place. That's all ready to go. Um, obviously, when we trigger the door to open, we're going to need a gun. So let's now bring the gun into our scene. And we're going to place it over here somewhere where we can pick it up once we have um, selected or rather opened that door. Uh, so let me quickly establish where our candle objects are because I don't want to intersect some of these candle objects. So let's put our gun here on this side of the table. So to do that, let's go to our object assets. Let's go to the handgun and let's import this into our scene by dragging and dropping. And it does appear to be quite small, so we just need to increase the size. Let's have that as three by three by three. Is that maybe four by four by four? And let's rotate and have it lying down on the table. And let's zoom in and have a quick look. How does that look now? So if we rotate 180, there's our gun right there that we're going to end up picking up. Uh, we'll have it like that. Maybe that is a bit too big. See, this is where it all comes into play now, where you should take your time uh, working with all of these objects, you know, to kind of make things make sense. Uh, so what we'll do is let's take our player back out and I'll place him just there. Let's press play. And then have a quick look at the gun and just see if it looks a reasonable size on the table. Yep, that should do the trick. So the last thing we're going to do now is because we need to plan a sequence of events, I want to just have this gun uh, encompassed by an object that we can essentially look at like our door. And we'll do that in the next tutorial. We'll have everything all together. Uh, so let's go to game object. Let's go to 3D object. Let's go to cube. And we'll call this gun pickup. And I'm going to drag and drop it onto our gun and zero out the position so it covers the gun. Increase the scale so it covers the entire gun like that. 
And then what I'll do is drag that out so it's its own object again, turn off the mesh renderer, and that will be our gun pickup. Now, the gun is always going to appear there, but we're only going to be able to pick up the actual gun whenever we have triggered that door. So basically the sequence of events is going to be we go through and we trigger the door, we come back and we pick up the gun and put the candle down. So that is what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So make sure at this point you've got your monster there, you've got your gun trigger pick up right there, you've got your gun in the scene and maybe just play around a little bit more, get some more detail in there. Uh, if you want to use a different monster Go ahead, go go use whatever model you want. Uh, the, you know, fundamentally, it will be the same sort of thing that we play around with. Uh, so yeah, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series. And I'll see you next time.